Hello everyone and welcome. Today's video is about memory allocation. When the boot sequence got executed, the BIOS takes over and it occupies the lowest memory addresses. Then after some procedures, operating system gets loaded and it occupies the highest memory addresses. When operating system booted up, it takes control over rest of the memory and allocates memory for each new process. The allocated memory includes multiple segments, for example, code segment, heap, and stack. The code segment contains executable instructions of the program. OS loads the instructions into the code segment. Globally initialized variables and static variables find their home into data segment. Uninitialized variables in the global scope gets allocated in another segment called BSS, then they get initialized to zero in the memory. OS reserve a portion of memory for the heap. This is where dynamically allocated memory is managed during program's execution. Operating system also allocates memory for the stack, which is used to manage function calls, local variables, and function parameters. As functions are called, the stack grows downward in memory. Now that we've looked into how memory works, let's dig even deeper into idea of heap. The heap is an area of memory managed by the operating system. Here is where two really important functions from the C-standard library comes into play, malloc and free. Right at the start of the program, the runtime library requests a new chunk of memory from OS using a system call. Then it creates a pool of memory. When you call malloc, the library checks the existing pool for the requested size. If a good chunk of memory that fits your request is already exists in the pool, it will be given to you. But if there is no space available in the pool, the runtime library makes another system call to allocate memory. Then after adding it to its local data structures, the pool is updated. Then new memory available and can be passed to you. The memory address is given to the user as a pointer, which lets you access and use the memory you've been given. You can cast it to other types of data or use it with new operator. But remember, once you're done with that memory, you must give it back using free. But using malloc directly could be problematic. Here are a list of common issues with malloc. One of the biggest problems with using malloc directly is the potential for memory leaks. If you allocate memory using malloc and forget to release it with free, that memory will be lost and can be reclaimed until your program exits. This can lead to bad memory usage and even program crashes in the long run. If you allocate memory using malloc and then free it, any pointer that still reference the memory become dangling pointers. If you attempt to access or modify the memory through a dangling pointer, you can run into undefined behavior, crashes, or data corruption. Over time, as you allocate and deallocate memory using malloc and free, memory fragmentation can occur. This means that memory becomes divided into small, non-contagious blocks, making it difficult to allocate large blocks of memory even if the total free memory is sufficient. Malloc and free involved with some performance overhead due to their internal memory management. If you're repeatedly allocating and deallocating small chunks of memory, this overhead can become significant. One way to tackle memory limitation is by requesting a big chunk of memory from the operating system. This involves just a single system call and once granted, this allocated memory is reserved solely for your program's use. With a fixed size, you can then proceed to divide it into smaller sections, each with specific rules. This division process is managed by memory allocators. Memory allocators usually get implemented with a set of functions, a constructor to allocate a big chunk of memory, and allocate to request a new memory address locally from the allocated memory, a deallocate to release the block to be used later. Also, there is a destructor to release the allocated memory. Some may implement other functionalities like reset to clear the allocator state or resize to allocate more memory and move the existing data into newly allocated memory. Unlike malloc, the memory management is completely under control and will have fewer system calls so it prevents performance bottlenecks while giving more control to the developer. Various memory allocation techniques exist. Arena memory allocation is a memory management technique that involves allocating memory in chunks from a pre-allocated arena or pool of memory. In order to implement it in C++, we need a couple of things to be done. We need arena size and C to check the memory boundaries and prevent memory overflows. Alignment refers to the practice of ensuring that data is placed in memory at specific memory addresses. This alignment requirement is often dictated by the hardware and can have significant impact on the performance of your software and game development project. We will get deeper into this topic later on. We also need a start pointer which indicates beginning of the allocated memory. 
In Constructor, we assert that alignment is power of 2. In many hardware design, the memory retrieved by CPU is power of 2. To better understand this statement, you can think of number 8 and 7. 8 in binary is 1 0 0 0 and 7 is 0 1 1 1. And if you logically add these two numbers, the answer will always be 0 and this is correct for every power of 2. Then after initializing the class members, we allocate a chunk of memory using malloc. In order to understand memory alignment, you might want to take a look at how CPU retrieve data from physical memory or cache. If the data is correctly aligned with CPU architecture, it can be retrieved in less CPU cycles. But if data is not aligned in the memory, adjacent memory blocks are also needed in order to calculate the final result, which means more CPU cycles. Here is the implementation to allocate logic. First, to create an address to the latest allocation. And after calculating the alignment padding, we assert that the new address is inbound. Then we can proceed with seeking and return a pointer to the new address. In our in allocator, there will be no need for the allocation and memory can be reused. We'll be implementing other allocators that can deallocate and reuse memory later on. All we can do is to reset the seek position and restart from the beginning. We also need the destructor to free the memory from heap. Here is the final benchmark comparing malloc and arena allocator. So in this video, we have learned about memory layouts, malloc internals, and different allocation techniques. In the next video, I'm going to focus more on implementing other allocators such as free list and pool. It's been a pleasure having you all with me today. If you're eager to explore more tech topics, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos.